Today I have a Sony CDP209 CD player of which the display is not working. It plays CDs fine, but navigating songs without a display is not optimal. Now it might be a loose connection, it might be something completely different. Let's open both our minds and the device and have a look. When disassembling devices I like to draw a sketch of the device and attach any removed screws with tape in this way. Now I know which screws went where. Sometimes very similar but different screws are used in devices and you might ruin something by replacing the wrong screw, which you want to avoid at all costs. At first glance there seems to be no obvious things wrong here, so let's remove the PCB that has the display on it. Let's measure the wires that connect the power supply to the main PCB first. These connectors can be measured by sticking a needle in the connector on one end and measure the solder connection on the main PCB on the other end. Now this is my very first upload to YouTube, so bear with me, I lost the audio track of this clip. It's beeping away nicely, there seems to be nothing wrong. But I made the mistake of diving way too deep to start with and ended up measuring the display controller chip. I found the service manual online on this wonderful site and measured some voltages that are in the schematic. It turned out that the required 30 volts was not entering the display controller chip, so I decided to trace the voltage starting at the power supply, which I should have done first because this is what I found. Apparently some pixies had a bit of a party using the power supply as the barbecue because these diodes are fried. Let's measure them just to show how you can measure diodes. When measuring a diode, put your multimeter to the diode setting. Measure the diode in two ways, switching the black and red leads from the multimeter. One way it should read OL, which means open loop, I believe, and the other way it should read somewhere around 0.6 volts. The changing value on some diodes is probably because they are connected to a capacitor, which we are now charging with our multimeter. Some seem to be fine, but let's just replace all five of them with one and four 007 diodes. They are quite cheap and they are able to take a thousand volt hit. So they should survive the next Pixie barbecue. So just for comparison, here I'm measuring a new 1N4007 diode. You can see that in one direction it will miss measure open lead, and in the other direction it will measure 0.6 volts or thereabouts. Now this machine is a Hakko FR301 desoldering gun, which is amazing. It's not cheap, but it works so well. No need for fiddling with WIC anymore or those hand-powered solder suckers. Those will do the job, but this machine is awesome. Thanks to Mr. Carlson's lab for the tip. And although I had to sell one kidney to pay for it, it is very enjoyable to use. So here are the desoldered diodes. They have seen better days. Now let's clean up the board with some isopropyl alcohol.
and get ourselves a few new diodes. To clean my blue meth, I like to use these lint rollers. This one's from IKEA. Now I got myself this new soldering iron and as you can see it heats up very very fast. I love this little machine. I'll put a link in the description. So let's solder in the new diodes. And let's put the device back together. Now as you can see the display is working again and I have to keep on talking now because otherwise I might get a copyright infringement notice because of that wonderful music by Eric Clapton I'm playing. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully uh, until the next video. Bye then!